short moments, many times, open intelligence becomes obvious, becomes more and more obvious. Open intelligence is our fundamental intelligence. It's our fundamental identity. When we stop thinking for a moment, we recognize open intelligence, the intelligence by which you know anything. That is open intelligence. Conventionally, we've been training to see this intelligence as a lot of individual intelligences locked within a skull and that somehow the mind is creating this intelligence. So conventionally we think that the physicality brings about intelligence. But in short moments, many times, of identifying this open intelligence, we see that that's just not the case. We prove it to ourselves in our direct experience. We don't have to take on the learned ideas of conventional ways of relating. Intelligence, all-pervasive, unborn, indestructible. So our primary identity is open intelligence. Within open intelligence are all the data, all the thoughts, the emotions, the sensations, the experiences. Inseparable from open intelligence, like the color blue in the sky are inseparable. Or like a flash of lightning is inseparable from the sky. Or like a rainbow is inseparable from space. All of our thoughts, emotions, sensations are inseparable from this bright, brilliant, open intelligence. So we rely on the instinctive recognition of this. So the instruction of short moments of open intelligence repeated many times, it becomes obvious to us. Now most of us try to think about this. We've been training most of our lives to use thinking to figure everything out, logic and reason based on more data streams. But here we're invited to simply relax for a moment, just relax the need to describe anything whatsoever. No need to understand a word that's being said here if, if you don't want to. That was the greatest relief for me. It was short moments of immediate relief by not trying to figure it out. Because the more I tried to figure out what does reality want from me? What is, who is the nature of this person? What is the nature of everyone? What's the meaning of reality? It was just ongoing pondering. You know, when you're just wrapped up in thought, and you're like, hmm, the nature of reality. It, it turns into all kinds of ideas and projections. And they could be pleasant or very unpleasant. So short moments, no need to figure it out. You are open intelligence as you are. Your thoughts, your emotions, your sensations are inseparable from bright, brilliant, open intelligence. The training of Balance You supports us so that this becomes more and more just sealed open. We, we don't even need to think about it any longer. And I think for me it was a few years into the training before I just recognized that I wasn't thinking about it anymore. It, it didn't happen overnight because I was a lifetime of trying to figure everything out analytically, proving it. It just took some time before that mode of operation turned into something else. But the importance of the balance through training is that there is the Four Mainstays, which was so beautifully described. To try to do it on our own, I could see that in the times that I was trying to do it on my own, it just led to more trying to figure it out. How are data inseparable from open intelligence? So the Four Mainstays support us so easily and potently. So the Four Mainstays, again, the short moments, the training, the trainer and the community. Having training media text that only confirm the nature of reality, that all data are inseparable from open intelligence. But th we, there's no need to push away certain data, data streams, like negative ones. There's no need to replace them. And we also do not need to indulge them in short moments many times. All data are equal and even descriptions of open intelligence. So the training media just unerringly 
drives the point home. And then the, the trainer, somebody who has actually tested this out in their experience and has seen that this is the case. Positive, negative, and neutral, the dynamic energy of open intelligence. And then a community of people who are willing to test this out also. So what I see, I wanted to just bring it back to a, a, the practical example of everything we do at the, the Balance Free Center. I mean, it, it's nice to know the nature of your, your mind because you have a life to live and to try to go off and be in complete, a completely serene environment and figure it out, it, it never worked for me. So in the Balance You settings, we have so many outrageous projects that you can be involved in where your to-do list is virtually unending and you get to test out the powerful algorithm of the Four Mainstays to see what it means to have open intelligence as your primary identity. We can see the downsides of not relying on open intelligence as our identity. So, for instance, <laughs> these massive Vibe Live productions that we've been putting on. <coughs> Basically putting on a top-level show using equipment that's 10 years old and rusted and falling apart, where half the time things are not working properly. And the time scale to put on this show, most people would prepare for at least a few months to have everything in place before you go on stage and you you turn on the, the sound desk. And we do this in a matter of hours. And you know, we hear one morning that, okay, uh, we decided we're going to have a show this evening and we're going to record it. We want 16 tracks and we also want a meal for 50 people and, you know, and we also have the trainings all day and the open meetings and there's 50 people here to make this happen. And, you know, this is something we did yesterday in a matter of hours, and we pulled it off. Now, the downside of not relying on open intelligence is the whole thing wouldn't have worked. <laughs> <coughs> people would have left. Most of the people would have just got fed up, frustrated. You, because, like I said, things are they're challenging in, in certain situations like this. It's not like we have state-of-the-art equipment yet <laughs> to put on a production like this. So most people would have just been arguing and, and really believing in that. And still today would have been constantly playing it out and they would have whole grudges and, you know, maybe other people would have went out and just got really hammered and been really hung over today. And I, you know the dynamics. If you've been in any sort of festival or production, you know what it's like. And yet here everybody's sitting peacefully, calmly, Seeing that the data, they self-release. They're inseparable from this basic space of open intelligence. That we, we've learned that we can let them be as they are, rather than indulging in them and making a great big story that needs to be held on to. The here and now immediately clears itself. Yesterday's event, like a line drawn in water. On to the next event, with a to-do list twice as long as yesterday's. Well, just a practical example of seeing that how the downside of that would have been that the community would have broken down and members would have left and started their own little version of it and hoped that it would be a better version and yet still believing in the independent nature of data, giving all the power to the descriptions of anger, frustration, <laughs> desire, jealousy, pride, arrogance and then just collapsing into those data streams. So here we are, and we're ready for the next production. And uh, it'll probably be 10 times more involved than last night's. So that, you know, the difference of indulging and leaving it as it is, in each short moment we can practice short moments of leaving the descriptions as they are. Even if you're indulging, in that moment we see we're wrapped up in, okay, I am describing my anger, for instance. 
with this training and my hanging out, testing out short moments, relying on the training, the train of the community, we see more and more it is easier to let it be as it is. We see it's anger arising, it is inseparable from open intelligence. It has no independent nature unless we give it that independence. So it, it's a very simple thing. We don't need to analyze, am I doing it correctly or not? We just see more and more of the short moments of open intelligence repeated many times. It's easier and easier to allow data streams to be exactly as they are. And then we carry on. We see there's freedom in the immediacy of that perception. Like if you want an amazing holiday, you might as well have it every single moment. Because hoping for a future destination where the data look better is always a fantasy. Even when you end up on that most amazing beach with all of everything in place that you ever wanted, you're still going to experience anger, frustration, desire, hatred, jealousy. You just will. So you have no other... If you want to continue in that way of living, you can, but it, it, it's not a life of ease and enjoyment and benefit for yourself and others. A fu fully you know, benefit to all. Another thing I really love about this, about Balance You, is if we have an area of interest. You mentioned energy and free energy, and everybody here has an interest in one field or another. Then we see how we can use our own gift strengths and talents to bring something about. You know, we have a trainer to um, reflect our ideas with. We get clear on how to use our gifts, our strengths and talents in a way that benefits us and other people. And we actually, the more we hang out in the community, we see many, many more ways that we can use all of our resources to be of benefit to everyone on this planet and beyond. The idea to have a company that only makes money for a certain few people just becomes inconceivable at one point. Or seeing how we destroy the planet trying to create more energy also doesn't seem like a good option anymore. You know, all of these natural impulses to improve ourselves, improve the planet, they just they become more and more obvious how we see we can do it effortlessly. It's not in rearranging the data and getting rid of everything that's negative or accumulating positive. It's in allowing everything to be as it is. Having a community of people also interested in improving everything. Like, we don't want to destroy the planet further, so we use the Four Mainstays to empower ourselves and see how these projects can naturally come into existence. In each short moment, there is nothing is wanted. <laughs> Reality is as it is, not giving or wanting. It's just as it is. More and more through short moments, we see that reality is a stream of pure benefit. When we leave the descriptions as they are, we see the descriptions in their fundamental meaning, inseparable from pure <coughs> benefit. You get to see that very directly in your experience. So then how do you prolong short moments? Mm -hmm. Can you tell me? Many times. Short moments, when uncontrived short moments. If we try to prolong them, it just is more work. So whenever you naturally remember to do so, even if you've been in the training for five, six, seven, to eight, ten years, short moments repeated many times, it just becomes more and more obvious. The nature of reality becomes more and more illuminated, inexhaustibly. The insights will never cease to arise and release. There's no stopping point in open intelligence.